Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Today our topic is about the dirty, uh, some dirty people who cannot live without being dirty. Uh, you know, every few weeks we see Turkey trying to harm some neighbors. And they did already harm many neighbors. Uh, mistakenly, we think Turkey harm only Christians. Turkey harm everybody. Turkey destroyed Syria. More than 4 million Syrian lost their houses, their life because of Erdogan. Turkey attacked the Muslims in Kurdistan. Hundreds of thousands of Tur Kurdish, they die because of Turkey. Turkey killed people in Libya. And Libya is just Muslim country. There's no Christian there except the convert and the convert they live in Europe. Turkey have bases now in Africa, causing chaos between Sunni and Shia. Turkey is a problem, but what is behind the problem? The appearance is Erdogan is a Muslim uh, person who is trying to establish Islamic government. What behind the scene is, they are trying to establish an Islamic empire. And Islam is used as a way to control. Erdogan, he don't care really for Islam. He's, this guy is just like anyone who uses, let us say, there's a wave. Like now in USA, there's a wave of a Black Lives Matter. There's many people that take advantage. They say, okay, let's join the waves because that will give us, uh, you know, some fame and will make us go somewhere. Uh, people who support uh, anything, like, you know, there's a waves happen always. And there is people who ride waves. Erdogan is one of them. The Islamic agenda of Erdogan, which is the Muslim Brotherhood agenda, it's always used for controlling, not for the sake of Islam. This guy, he don't care for Islam. He is a president for how long now? He did not close one night club. He did not forbid drinking alcohol in Turkey. And Turkey is number one country in the Middle East for prostitution business, night club, striptease, you name it. Country actually when they ask Erdogan and the, uh, uh, why you don't close uh, the striptease clubs and the night clubs and the alcohol, uh, you know, he, uh, his minister, the Islamic minister, uh, the minister of Islam, they have someone for, imagine for this. He said, who is the one who will pay for your salary if we close the night clubs? All of Turkey running by economy which is very fragile very weak and number one income source is prostitution strategic club tourists who are coming for sex tourists like from saudi arabia kuwait bahrain etc looking after the blonde diggers and in turkey you will find human trafficking one of the biggest business they bring and they kidnap women from Bosnia, from Albania, from all poor countries, and from Africa, and they are used there for a human trafficking purpose. But lately, we have, you know, coronavirus, and coronavirus mean no prostitution, no visitors, no money. The country is totally in collapse. You will notice that Erdogan, he is like a worm who suck blood. When the war in Syria started, the first thing Erdogan he wanted to take over the oil of Syria, and that provide Turkey almost with a free oil for more than seven or eight years. He was exchanging his weapon with ISIS, which controlled the oil of Syria at that time for four dollars a barrel imagine four dollar when the price was 65 
Erdogan pay four dollars and the one who buy the oil is his son-in-law and the one who sell it to Turkey is his son-in-law it's a family business now so they made billions of dollars for free by just the differences between the price they, they, they buy with which is a theft they are buying from ISIS and then they sell it for sixty sixty five dollars when the when they bought it for four dollars but then after that ISIS collapse and ISIS does not exist to buy weapon and to exchange oil which was providing a lot of relief to the economy of Turkey and then right away Corona came and a country most of its income supported by tourism and terrorism because one side is ISIS supporting the economy and the other side persecution night clubs tourists all kind of tourists there is good tourists there is a bad tourist let us say there's six tourists there's people that are just coming to see a country so the country is collapsing there's no money he tried his best he forced the government of Libya by supporting them to buy weapon from him and Libya is a rich country the purpose is we will make those people under our command and they will force them to buy only from us and that will give us, give us a lot of money but even that is not working because the oil is not in the hand of the government they have little the one who controlled the oil is in the other side or let us say in the other aisle which is against Turkey he tried his best to search for gas and oil everywhere so he go close to the borders of uh, Greece almost establishing a war because he's desperate trying to find oil his era is ending no money and then one day he announced just a few weeks ago that Turkey found a gas field in the Black Sea and guess what it's a fraud this is all what the dictators in the Middle East they do when they are out of money to cool down the people who they are desperately dying from hunger no jobs no money suddenly you will find them uh, announcing that they found something very priceless like a, a mountain of gold we found a mountain of gold and then the citizen he works oh soon we will get rich man we found a mountain of gold this is what Erdogan trying to do he mentioned that he have a field of gas where it is when you are going to have it just wait you will see there's nothing when he start putting the pressure on Greece almost went in war and then he noticed that it's not working for his benefit and we will we'll talk about that why if you go uh, let me see if I can find it in the news give me a second Trump he might be silenced about the behavior of Turkey but Trump is not Trump is punishing Turkey really badly but in a quiet way the Congress blocked buying any weapon from Turkey you might say well, why USA buy weapon from Turkey you know they have some like it's like a cheap parts you know it's like uh, it's not really a weapon so the Congress they block any buying Turkey and this is just August 12 2020 Turkey make a big income from the American base oh we are losing internet I apologize guys our internet is not good here as you notice I live in Somalia United States of America where our internet is horrible those companies they lie to us they say to us we will give you high speed and then you find yourself you have no speed at all all right so I apologize if you have a problem with the uh, 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 like uh, the broadcast just uh, refresh your page so as you see here the Congress secretly blocked US arms sales to Turkey in the same time they are not buying from Turkey and they will not sell to Turkey 
and they forbid them from having the F-35. Trump, if he won this coming election, I hope he will do, the base of America and Turkey is going to be shut down. And that means billions of dollars will be taken from Turkey away. The reason Trump is so quiet with Turkey, he don't want what to happen to the American army in Iran one day, or the embassy, to happen to the American army in Turkey. Uh, having a thousand or seven hundred uh, American soldiers in a base doesn't make them able to fight a nation surrounded in, you know. And they have 50 nukes in those bases. So I believe Trump now in the process of removing all those nukes and all those soldiers. And the Turkish would wake up one day in the morning, find that zero soldier is there. And that's it. The faucet of money from USA is gone. And they are going to move all the weapon and the base mostly to Crete in Greece. This is why you see Bombeo, the foreign minister of USA, keep going to Greek every few weeks. It's not about, I mean, those people, they don't go there for nothing. They are preparing for a big base in Greece. So USA under Trump decide that it's time to exchange, or let us say to change what was before, that we are under the, uh, uh, we, need the we need the base of uh, Turkey. We do not. We do not need it. We are supplying a terrorist with money. So they are moving everything from Turkey, and soon Turkey will collapse more and more. If you go and see the news about the Turkish lira, why the Turkish lira keep fading? You can read articles and you will see that this, this, this currency is dead. Soon it's going to be in the price of a toilet paper. Actually, toilet paper, it might be more expensive. Imagine yourself, you get a salary this month, and your salary can buy you, let's say, uh, you know, you can pay uh, at least your rent. After two weeks, your salary cannot pay you half of your rent. So things is extremely bad. And Erdogan, he keeps jumping from failure to failure. This is why he decided to announce that Hagia Sophia is going to be a mosque. He's trying to earn some support for his name is collapsing and his government and his regime and the, the Muslim Brotherhood Party is gone. So now we go back to Azer Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan people, they are Turkish originally. Erdogan, he's trying to extend his arms to countries who they are originally Turkish, or let us say they have a relationship with the same kind of Turkish, like the Tatar. The Tatar, in case you do not know, if you remember, the Russian, they took Crimea from Ukraine. And many people do not understand what happened. Ukraine, as a country, uh, let us say as a leadership, made a big, big mistake by listening to the Western countries. When you are weak, you will become like a cow. Everybody want to put a knife on you. The Turkish, they were trying to take a Crimea for themselves. Why? Because the Tatar, who they are the grandfather of the Turkish, they are originally from Crimea. So Erdogan trying his best to establish Islamic parties in Tatar, or she is a Crimea, to take over that area. And if he take over that area, he will control a part of the Black Sea, the entrance of the Black Sea, and he will control the side from Russia, which means he will be like putting like a, a leech on the Russian neck. Erdogan, he knew that Ukraine is weak. And there is many reasons for Ukraine to be weak. They used to be under the communists for a long time. They used to be under the Soviet Union. They have no leadership. Uh, you know, uh, Christianity was forbidden. Uh, Bible is forbidden. Churches is closed. You get arrested if you teach the gospel. And, and, uh, and uh, everything is good in the country is gone because of the communists. And then communists suddenly is gone too. And then people, they found themselves with no support, found themselves with no system, found themselves with no leadership, found themselves still under the influence of the Russian authority. 
And then they try to save themselves, so they attach themselves to the Western, and the Western, they don't care for you. So they try to save themselves to be under the influence of the Russian. They found themselves under the influence of Joe Biden and his son. If you notice now, in all the news we see about uh, Armenia, not a single Western country is saying anything as if nothing happening. Did you notice? Nobody. France did not do anything. Germany is not even mentioning it. USA, Trump, we said why he will not because he have the base. You know, they, they have to get rid of the, the army they have in Turkey before they can do anything against Turkey. So Erdogan, he understand that Europe will not be involved supporting Armenia. He knew and understand that Armenia is a small, tiny country. Population is a small, economy is a small, and they, are, they can be an easy target. Same time, by creating a war between Azerbaijan and Armenia, that will make Azerbaijan buy all the weapons from Turkey. And now, you know, Erdogan, he supplied the Azerbaijan army with many uh, flying uh, drones, you know, the one you control from the ground, you know, for attack. So he sold hundreds of millions of dollars of those. And this is all is a stolen technology from USA. The stupid American, they allow the Turkish, you know, you see, we, told, we just told you, USA stop buying weapon from Turkey. But how Turkey is making weapon? The American, the greedy American, as usual, they open manufacturers in different countries to make a cheap part. And by doing that, they transform their technology to Islamic countries or even to China. If you open your computer now, if you look, if you have an iPad, look in the back, it says made in China. I mean, they are not even shy, shy to say. So Apple, they say that we are Apple, famous company, but the fact your computer is made in China. And then they complain that China is stealing their product, but you are the one who gave them the product. And you told them make it there. So they can make exactly the same product because they are the one who is making your product. And that's exactly what happened with Turkey now. So Turkey trying to seek as much as resource to cover the collapse, but the collapse is coming. And actually what happened now is going to increase how fast the collapse will happen. Because maybe Armenia is a small country, have a small population, but Armenian people are very successful people. They are very much powerful in many countries in the world, including USA. And now you will notice that the pressure on the filthy Erdogan will increase in an incredible way. Armenian are people who you don't want to play with. You see, I know Armenian. If one guy is an Armenian, he have a fight with 10 people who they are not, he will not back down. He will not run away. Those people are not cowards. In the top of that, they are very smart. I remember an Armenian guy, he listened to my car engine and he told me what the problem, but just by listening. They have the best mechanic, the best engineers, the best intelligent people you can imagine. And those best in everything, they can make best of everything. You want to fight them? Good luck with that. So I'm not really worried about Armenia, but we are here to make you aware of the plan and what happened when you are left alone. What happened when you are a small country? Who care for you? You know, always we make a mistake, we think that, oh, okay, you know, Armenia, now there's people who will support and jump to defend us, like the Russian. What if the Russian did not? You remember when the Constantinia failed? The Constantinia failed not because the Turkish were strong, but because the rest did not care. Do you want another Constantinia? It can happen. Because we as a community, we are not united. You notice that you know, I, for me, I don't like to talk about division between churches, but it's true. It is real. The devil divided us. Why we don't support the Armenian? Huh. Uh, I am Protestant. Uh, I know I am Catholic too. And I don't have, you know, they, they are Orthodox. But those people, they target you too. They don't care if you are Orthodox or Catholic or Protestant. They don't care what, whoever you are. 
So because we are divided, they are taking advantage of us. If you look at those countries in the east of Europe, who they are, all of them, Orthodox, Bulgaria, Serbia, Romania, Greece, Ukraine, for sure Armenia. Those alone, they can be one of the most powerful army in the world, if they are united. Extremely powerful, and nobody will dare to get close to them. If they sign a piece of paper says, if you attack one of us, you attack the rest. But because they are divided, Greece left alone, small tiny country, 10 million, 15 million. Turkey is 100 million citizen. We are talking about what? We are talking about a huge difference. So the family is divided. There's no father. There's no grandfather to gather them together. And because of that, it makes the octopus come into them one after one. Yesterday he was going after Greece, and then Greece was lucky that Macron, the president of France, he did not let that happen. Otherwise, the rest of Europe don't care. The only one who stood with the Greece, it was the president of France. But what if he did not? What would happen to Greece? All those countries, they should be united. You see, the European Union is a big failure. Until now, they don't have European army. This is telling you how big the failure is. So they have European Union, but they don't have European borders. If somebody attack one country, the rest will be watching. So what is the point of this union? Business. You join a business union, you did not join a union. You are not part of it. And if something happened to you, they will let you be eaten by the beast alone. If you look at this picture here, the media, the news, they say there's a clashes, clashes between the Azerbaijan army and the, the Armenian army. This is not the clashes. They attack, they attack villages. They took it already. What clashes? This is the clashes. You invade a, a country and you take citizen, and you, you know, this is the clashes. Those people in their villages suddenly they found Syrian fighters. Imagine Syrian fighters. Erdogan the filthy, he is using the Syrian. This is another thing too. He is using the Syrian refugee as a missionary to missionary to fight. So he sent 4,000 of them to fight in Azerbaijan. And here you see that the coward army of Azerbaijan is so weak to the point they cannot win a ball with the Armenian without getting the Syrian fighters. And they are paying them between a $1,500 to $2,000 a month. 4,000 of them, they are brought to fight in Azerbaijan. And all of those, they are brought by the Turkish. And the Turkish, they charge the Azerbaijani government a high price for every fighter from Syria, and then they give the half of the price for the fighter himself. It's just a pure business. The one who's saying what you got is the news, it's in front of you. Are you blind? Go search right now. Syrian fighters in Azerbaijan. <laughs> Where are you getting? Actually, they have videos of them too. 
There's a video of one of them. He says, don't go to Azerbaijan. Don't go to Azerbaijan. He was heavily wounded. I mean, why I can't get the news, you cannot. So, what happened now is going to happen every time to you, if you are in a small, tiny country. Unless you think again about you uniting your friends, your, your brothers, your family. You see, all those countries are family. The Western, and I, you know, for me, I live in the West, right? I live in America. But sadly, the Western always they have a very evil, disgusting government. They divide people in order to have a place. They told the Ukrainian, if you leave Russia, we will make you rich. You will be worthy. You will be happy. And then the Ukrainian, they go to bed, dream. Tomorrow we will drive nice cars. Tomorrow we can buy the, the, the food we like to have. We can pay for our bills. The country will be fantastic. And then this make them start war with the Russian. And when the war start, nobody is there. Nobody can fight Russia. Who there? So they make them go against the Russian, but when they made them go against the Russian, they found themselves alone. So they lost the Russian. And now they don't have the West. So they left them alone. The same happened with the Georgian. Those all are Orthodox countries. They are dividing them, make them enemy to each other. The Georgian, they told him, go against Russia, launch a war against the Russian, etc. Well, don't worry, we are going to support you. This is in the time of Obama. The stupid president of Georgia, he believed them. In two hours, his army collapsed. And he found there is no Western behind him. And Georgia until now is poor, desperate country. There's no money. And actually became a tourist, a terrorist base for many Islamic terrorism groups. Never trust Western government to help you. Never. They don't. They have interest. You see, those government in the West, they don't care for you as a human. They care for business. It's all about business. Didn't you learn from Greece? I mean, Greece is part of European Union. Very important country in the European Union. And when Erdogan is coming, Germany refused even to put any sanctions in Turkey and the rest of European countries. The only one was trying to help is Macron. One guy. What if this guy doesn't exist? Otherwise, Erdogan was going to launch an attack in Greece. And let me assure you, there's no match. Not because the Greek people are not good fighters, but it's a small, tiny country. The dream of taking over Greece, actually all of Turkey is Greece. The real Greece is Turkey, all of it. Hagia Sophia, this is a Greek church. This is the land of Greece. He want to take more. Why? Because he was hoping what happened with the Constantinia one day is going to happen again. Those European who lost their faith, they don't go to churches, they are not Christian no more, they became so liberals and they are Christian by name, so we can attack them and they will not support each other and nobody will care and we will take over Greece. And now the same. We need a market for buying weapons. The Azerbaijani, they are part of us, they are Turkish like us, so we are going to tell them go and attack Armenia. So we, you know, we destroy Armenia, which is number one enemy for Turkey. In the same time, we can create a war, which means people will buy our weapon. And at the same time, we'll expand our control to Azerbaijan, which have a lot of resource. Resource. If you look at the comments in Twitter, You will find that the only one is feeling the pain of Armenia is the Armenian. The rest of the Christian community, they are just watching as of nothing happening. 
you know, when Erdogan announced the mosque of uh, Hagia Sophia to be a mosque, you will notice that there's nobody is talking about it, almost. The Pope, he said, this is sad. I mean, thank you for saying this is sad. I mean, this is the best you can do. Trump, he posted in the same day, a post about food. He liked it in the restaurant. The rest is the same. So when they see that you don't, you are not united, and all of you trying to avoid the problems, and you say, this is none of my business, they take more action against you, and they will become more aggressive, because now they notice that you are weak. You are not united. Look what happened. They were afraid that they would sanctions in Turkey if he took Hagia Sophia. Nothing happened. The filthy, garbage, stupid, idiot Merkel in Germany, the, big, the, biggest, the biggest perverted women in the world, she is destroying Germany and she is destroying Europe. And still those stupid German still they vote for her. She refused to put any sanctions in Turkey, not even to wave a finger for Turkish government. The funny they say that they are against the Assad regime because he's a dictator, but Erdogan, he has thousands of journalists in jail. Still, they do no sanctions. People kidnap, disappear. This guy, he make a unit just to, a, a police unit and this police unit is just to arrest anyone he insult Erdogan. And no sanctions. See, this is the real map. The real map is all of Turkey, and this is the real map of Armenia. Half of Turkey is Armenia. And the other is Greece. This is the truth. This is their land. Turkey invaded Cyprus and took half of Cyprus. What European Union did? Nothing. American, nothing. So the Turkish, they have a history of aggression. It's like an octopus when a suck of blood and swallow victims, small ones. And they learn carefully that our neighbors, they don't care for each other. So we can swallow one by one until we swallow them all. A few weeks ago, I saw in the news that the Greek government was going to sign an agreement to buy Turkish weapon. <laughs> I mean, have you ever heard of a country suffer from the Turkish enmity and aggression for centuries? They are trying to buy Turkish weapon. I mean, how stupid this government is. You are supplying your, I mean, they are buying a drone made in Turkey which means the Turkish, they can spy at them and see what they see with the camera of the drone. In the same time, they supply the enemy with money. Same time, they can they knew, they knew the secret of your weapon. I mean, this is your, this is your enemy, you idiot. How you can win a war against an enemy, you are buying his weapon. What happened to Greek? Those, they used to be the genius of the world. They cannot make an airplane. Yeah, we are busy making coffee. You know, we want to sit in the balcony, enjoy the sun. We are relaxed people. We are Greek people. And we are very proud. Somehow the Greek, sometimes they remind me of the Arab. You know, we are Arab. We are so proud about the past, but we have no future. And we have nothing to, to, to be proud about in the present. There's a guy who took a picture of himself when he was six years old, next to a hole in the street. He took a picture again, 35 years old, next to the same hole in the street in front of his house. It's not fixed yet. 
Instead of creating an army, they knew that they have a biggest enemy next to them. He is willing to swallow them anytime, any moment. What they do, they relax for the last century as if nothing happened. And when the war almost started, suddenly we want to buy weapon. So what we can say that those people who have very bad leaders do wait for the last moment to establish an army. You cannot. Do you ask yourself why Erdogan don't dare to attack Israel? Do you think he loves Israel? And by the way, there is a lot of secret agreement between Israel and Turkey. And Israel actually is making even weapon in Turkey. And by the way, the filthy Netanyahu is part of the war against Armenia. Netanyahu is supplying the Azerbaijani army with technology and army weapon. <clears throat> this is why I don't like this man, Netanyahu. Many people they say to me, uh, what do we know that you support Israel? I support Israel, right? Not government. Netanyahu is a very filthy, trashy person. And many Armenians now are killed by the weapon is sold by Israel to the Azerbaijan. And here you ask yourself a question. How in the world Israel is supporting Islamic country which dream to destroy Israel? Here is the devil play. If you remember Netanyahu, he was he opened a hospital for Al-Qaeda and ISIS in the south of Syria. I mean, does it make sense to you? Yeah, it does make sense. It does. Those are fighting the Assad regime, so the enemy of my enemy is my friend, even though he's my enemy. This is their logic. It's evil logic. And remember, I'm not talking about the Israeli, I'm talking about the faith in Netanyahu. This man he is going to be burned burn, burn in hell, Netanyahu. He's a corrupt, and count my words, he will end in jail for the rest of his life. Just wait. Israel even tried to sell weapon to Ukraine so they can ignite the war between Russia and Ukraine. And then what the Russian did, the Russian are smart. They said, listen, potato, if you sell a weapon to the Ukrainian, we are going to sell a very powerful weapon to the Iranian. And this is why Netanyahu said, oh, oh no, 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 okay, forget about it. We will not sell any weapon. <laughs> so what we are trying to say to you, that only you can protect you. You don't wait for the neighbor to protect you. If you have a good neighbor, God bless him. But what if he is not a good neighbor? What if the good neighbor decide to say none of my business? Why the Armenian don't build a very powerful army? You know how big the threat is. Why Armenian around the world don't send money and they are very rich? There's tons of billionaires, Armenian, very rich people. Armenians are very successful people, by the way. If you go in the Middle East, you will not find a single Armenian is poor. Why? Because they are genius, smart. Those people, they came to the Middle East after the Ottoman killed their family in Armenia and they seek refugee in some Christian territory, like in Lebanon, Syria. They came with no clothes and on, naked. You can go search the pictures. And now they are big businessmen and women. So why we wait until the Turkish invasion come and now we try to defend? What about we build an Armenian army which nobody can dare to say hello to? You see, many people they say, you know, some Christian community, fake people, they say to you, you should not have weapon. But we are Christian. You idiot. Jesus himself, he says, the one who don't have a sword, go and buy one. 
They don't even see this verse in the Bible. They said we have two, he said enough, which means enough to what? Enough to what we would do, walking in the road so pirates will not attack us. Not to go in war, to defend yourself. He don't have an army, he is not making an army. But in the case of a country, you have to have an army, and this army need to have more than two swords. Otherwise, your neighbor will eat you alive. I hope and I pray that those people who belong to those countries, Greece, Armenia, Cyprus, Ukraine, they will listen carefully. Georgia, never depend on other people protection. They will not protect you. They are using you. As simple as that. The only thing can protect you is you. Ukrainian are not people who they are short of technicians, engineers. They are very smart people. Actually, they used to have nukes. The idiot government there, they give their nukes. If Ukraine now have nukes, nobody will get close to them, including the Russian. They give it out. <laughs> Can you believe it? I mean, you have nukes in your hand, you give it out? Why do you want to do that? You need to be smart, otherwise we will call you a fool. Doesn't matter what is your name, what your citizenship is. If you are a fool, you are a fool, what we can say. And now we want to see how many people will support Armenia. Armenian like, okay, you know, for me, I'm sitting now behind my computer. I am not in Armenia. But what if I am a person who lives in Armenia? I will be the first one to join the armed forces, defend the land. But what about me sitting behind computer? We can do a lot of things. I don't know where are you guys from. Each one of us is from different country, and I'm not going to talk about those who live in Islamic countries because I know they cannot do anything. But those who don't live in Islamic countries, there's Congress, there's ministers, there's, you can call, you can ask, you can put a pressure, you can say, hey, where are you? How come you speak about a human right? How come they can go and kill and attack civilians? How come you are against attacking civilians in Syria, but when it's come to Turkey attacking civilians in Syria, in Armenia, in Greece, you don't they do say and do anything? Those are Armenian kids hiding from the bombs of the Turkish. How come when they want, they remember human rights? And when they want, human rights does not exist. Why Turkey can do whatever they want and all of them, they go silence? Erdogan, he said, we have millions of Turkish in Germany. If each one of them, he have six kids, we will have over Germany in 20 years maximum. Is that your fear? You have to make Turkish? You can't make them upset? So you wait until they get bigger in numbers? As I understand, there's a donation uh, sites to support the Armenian. Uh, but I cannot recommend any because I have to check how legitimate it is to be sure that people are doing the support to the Armenian people. But you can check that. Now, I see a post in the front of me from Kim Kardashian. Maybe many of you do not know that Kim Kardashian is an Armenian. For me, this woman doesn't count really. But here you notice that 
or meaning they have influence even the one we don't consider to be a quality they have a lot of influence and this is stupid Erdogan he is going to open the gate of Armenians have influence everywhere in Europe. They are a small community, yes. Small population, yes. But they are not people of, I mean, very successful people. Where this weapon is is made? Is it made in Turkey or made in Israel? I'm looking at the technique. I think it's made in Turkey because I can see the welding is is done poorly. I wish I can do more to support the Armenian, but I do my best. But for sure, the Armenian people, they deserve support. And, you know, talk is cheap. I mean, we are, we are doing the cheapest thing. But there's some of us, they have connection. Some of us, they have power. Some of them, they are in a position so for those, you need to do something. Anyway, the good news is coming from everywhere. The Turkish lira is collapsing. The economy is collapsing. Uh, Turkey is, is going to be demolished very soon because when there is no money, Guess what? A revolution will happen. You can keep citizens sitting in their homes, even if they support you, even if they are uh, supporting terrorism. Let us say this country became Islamist, which is not. But the second their stomach is hungry, then they will do what you cannot expect them to do. And this is what's happening now in Turkey. Their stomach is getting hungry more and more and more. So I believe the collapse of Turkey is coming. Actually, I saw a vision, but my Muslim, they said to, you, to me, oh, vision did not happen. The, the funny, the Muslim, they say the, the vision of the Prophet Muhammad happened 1400 years after, and they say, it, you know, it's okay. But my vision should, have a, should happen a week after. I saw a vision that Turkey being destroyed by an amazing, scary earthquake. God knows what kind of earthquake is going to be. And I believe the earthquake is already happening. This man, Erdogan, he is digging the grave of Turkey. Because what do you think will happen? He's, do you think he's going to win a war? I don't think so. What he will accomplish exactly? Uh, really, you know, many, sweet, we are tired again, again, government stopping them, you want civil war in Germany, really. Uh, just to show you here, and I respond from somebody stupid, just to show you the stupidity. Uh, Christian Prince, think you are getting an answer, really, you won't know how many s sweet, we tried again and again with government stopping them. You won civil war in Germany, really. What is that? Anybody, anybody understand? I, I mean, is that English? I'm not sure. So are you saying to me, you are letting the Turkish have influence in your country? And if you try to stop the Turkish, they will cause civil war? So you are stupid. 
That's when you know that be, this became a threat to your society and you're just watching. So you avoid the problem until they get bigger and then they take over you. Really? You are scared. Look at you. You are saying that we are scared, terrified to speak the truth. Because if we speak the truth, we will have civil war in Germany. That's mean already you're gone. I don't know what this person is talking about. You have a president, he is a president of Turkey. He want to make an election meeting in Germany. Have you ever heard of such a thing? A guy, he do election, 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 election happened locally in his country. This guy, he want to make big election meeting for a citizen of Turkey. So they are not German. Why do you give them citizenship? Those people, they have no loyalty to Germany. They have loyalty to Erdogan. You are stupid to give them citizenship. Imagine I am, let us say, from Saudi Arabia, and then the king of Saudi Arabia want to meet with me as a citizen. That means I'm not an American citizen. Iran is helping. Iran cannot help themselves, my friend. Iran is collapsing. They can't even pay salary for their soldiers. Trump, he made them go to the, to the moon, right? <clears throat> uh, anyway, here there's a picture, it says, the grandson, the son and the father or the grandfather in one picture, getting ready to go and defend their land. This is the kind of people I'm talking about. Those are the people who you cannot win against. The grandfather, the son and the grandson in one pictures bearing arm to defend their land. And look, with all the support of Turkey in this war, already Azerbaijan lost a lot. 33 tank, 4 helicopter, and you see the rest. 27 a drone, and the drone is not the same as in the picture, you know, drone are those or weapon drone. So we need, we need to support them. Those who cannot support by doing something, at least support them by your prayer. And we ask, we ask you to call your Christian leaders. Many here, maybe they are Orthodox. Why you don't call your bishop, say, hey, where are you? I mean, why you don't go on TV and say, at least go on TV, say something. I mean, can't you do that? Can they go in TV? What is those guys who put a big hat in the top of their head? They call themselves patriarch. I mean, what we have you for is just to get salary and have a nice house. I am not a patriarch. And I'm talking about it. Where are you? Did you hear any patriarch of the Orthodox Church saying anything? Asking people to go and strike in the street to come to, to, you know, they are powerful, by the way. They are very powerful, those men. Why we have them? What is their job exactly? A patriarch is a leader. Where is your leadership? Your leadership come when it's time to have a meal, to take photos. But when people they need you, you are not there. Where is the patriarch of Moscow? Where is the patriarch of Greece? Where is the patriarch of Romania? Where is all the patriarch? 
Where is the church? Where is the Orthodox Church? Where is the Pope? Where is the Protestant? We are so good to say, oh, hey, the Protestant, uh, they will not go to heaven. Oh, Catholic will not go to heaven. Oh, Protestant uh, will not go to heaven. All of you, you will go to hell. If you do that. For the Lord, he says, whoever believe in me, he is saved. There is nothing is called Catholic, nothing called Protestant, nothing called Orthodox. There is only one church. And those who divide the church are criminals. And now people are paying the price of division. A filthy person like Erdogan trying to eat our children is alive. And we are watching because, oh, we don't, uh, those are not from my country. Oh, they aren't even from my church. You're next. It's just a matter of time. And to be honest with you, I don't like those people who call themselves priests. I cannot say all of them they are the same, but I can say many of them they are like Muhammad, you know, they are doing business. It's just a business, nothing personal. They have no personal relationship with Christ, they have a business to do. And that's why you see, when we need them, they are not there. I mean, is it a shame that the one is posting about Armenia, war, is Kim Kardashian and the Patriarch are not there? I mean, Kim Kardashian, she saw it, and the Patriarch of Moscow did not. Where is my Trump? My Trump actually is hurting Turkey badly. And we explained, where is my Trump? Look like you came late. Trump, he stopped buy, selling weapons to Turkey, buying weapons from Turkey. Money is not coming there and they are moving as we speak. All the American troops from Turkey so they can close the American base and they are moving the nukes. This is the only reason Trump is going silence until they finish all of this. Otherwise, Erdogan, he can put his hands on the nukes we have there. And he can do the same as Iranian they did to the hostages in Tehran in the American embassy. So he's just being smart. But Trump is hurting Turkey badly. Actually, Trump, he sent weapon to Greece immediately to do war game to show Turkey we support Greece. Trump he is now in the process of moving all the USA troops from Turkey to Crete because they want to create a big American base there. This is where my Trump is. And because Erdogan, he knew that Trump is busy now with election, he cannot create problems. He have enough. He's playing in the dead time. Still, I want Trump to do more. And he can do more. Well, I'm not talking about Turkish in Germany in general. I'm talking about Turkish who they think they are Turkish supporting Erdogan. Otherwise, you can be Turkish. Do you know the opposite prophet? He's a Turkish. He's a nice guy. You know him, right? Opposite prophet and his wife, both are Turkish. Very nice people. We are not talking against Turkish. We are talking about people who want to suck the blood of others. And that is Erdogan and his supporters. When we say Turkish, we talk about what? I mean, those who they are in control. But doesn't mean there's every Turkish who want to kill you. Doesn't mean all Turkish, they want to attack Azerbaijan. But Erdogan, as a filthy man, he knew that he can use the relationship between the Azerbaijanian, which is originally they are kind of Turkish, to use that as a way to extend his... You see, this guy, he used what, is, what, what, what he have. In Libya, he is Muslim. He don't say I'm a Turkish. In Syria, he say I'm a Muslim. He don't say I'm Turkish. In Azerbaijan, he say I'm Turkish. He don't say I'm a Muslim. 
because Azerbaijan is not really an Islamic country. He is the same as Obama. In Obama, in the front of the Muslims, he's a Muslim. With the Jews, he's a Jew. He wears their hat. With the Christian, he wore the Bible. With the atheist, he makes fun of the Bible. So he used what he had in his hand in order to control and conquer. When he invited the Tatar leadership to come to Turkey, and he discussed with them how we can make, take back Crimea. But in the same time, Ukrainian president, he came to Turkey, and the Turkish Erdogan suddenly is saying, we support you. But you support who exactly? You support the Ukrainian government or the Tatar? You know what I mean? Uh, what is the mystery between Putin saving the... I don't think that Putin he so has saved anybody, anybody because at that time, my friend, Putin, he was not having a good relationship with Erdogan anyway. So you are mistaken there. Actually, Putin, he punished Turkey badly, and then Turkey have to pay heavily to Russia in order to forgive them. This is why they paid hundreds of millions of dollars, billions of dollars, to buy the 400. It was a penalty. It's not, it was not a reward. They shot a Russian airplane, and then since then, Erdogan is kissing the shoes of Putin. And Putin now is having a big control in Turkey. Became, Turkey became a big market for them. Imagine this country is collapsing, and yet he forced them to buy and spend billions of dollars to buy a weapon which they cannot use. Putin is a very smart person. He never supported Erdogan. Actually, by doing that, Erdogan is collapsing now. The billions he spent to buy the 400 missiles, which is useless, because NATO will not allow Turkey to use it. And Turkey cannot even use it without permission of Russia, <laughs> which is funny. So why you bought it? The Russian, they took the money, and now he had nothing but a trash. And in a few years from now, the 400 will be, actually already they are outdated, they have the 500. And the 400 they have is not even equal to the Russian 400. So why, what, what the benefit of, it was a bribe, so we took your airplane, we pay for the airplane, we pay for the family, for the pilot, we pay respect to him, and now we are going to give you billions of dollars, just leave us alone. That is a leader. His name is Putin. I advise all of you, even those who hate Putin, to get a leader to your country like Putin. He might be a dictator, he might, whatever you want to say, but this guy, he made his country the most powerful country in this world. Ukraine needs someone like Putin. Armenia needs someone like Putin. USA needs someone like Putin. Smart. You don't understand him. And why you don't understand him? Because he's so smart. He don't know what he's going to do next. His enemy is confused when they think about what he would do. He took a country collapsing. Women are sold online, literally. Russian bride, shipping to many countries. You can believe it or not. This is how he took Russia. And then after 20 years, Russia is Russia today. Nobody dare to play games with Russia. No one. And actually, I advise the Armenian not to trust the American to help them, but they can trust the Russian. The biggest fear of Erdogan is the Russian. He have hostages, American soldiers in Turkey. He knew that the American can do nothing to him as long as they have their American base there. If I am a leader of Armenia, you can sign a confederal uni union with Russia, which means all my borders will be protected by the Russian army. Who dare to attack me after that day? And then in the same time, I will keep my government independent inside Armenia. Why didn't do that? You are a country surrounded by enemies. 
every single neighbor around them is an enemy they have no sea they have no port which make it hardly to survive and then you have enemies around you where is turkey going the map you mean well this is the original turkey there's no turkey Turkey is not there. This is occupation. All this land is occupation. Half of Turkey is Armenia. The other half is Greece. <laughs> this is the truth. Turkey as a land is a theft. There's no Turkey. You see, the filthy Erdogan, he speak about, we are not occupation. We are not occupation like uh, Spain occupy. You know what Spain occupy? Your country, all of it, is a theft. Erdogan is an or Georgian origin, like Stalin. My friend, Erdogan is a Turkish. Georgian, not Georgian, he is not. Those are Turkish, those are Tatar. Jankiz Khan is their grandfather. What Georgian? Here we go. Now you want to give him. You want to give him Georgia, right? So now he say, okay, Georgia is my land too. Yeah, this is exactly what they are trying to do. Erdogan is Georgian when he want to be Georgian. He is from Tatar when he want to be Tatar. He is from Somalia when he want to be Somalia, and people like you support that. <laughs> this guy, he have no citizenship. He want to conquer and suck blood. He was dreaming to be the caliphate of the Islamic State. And this is collapse because of Putin. Not because of the American, by the way. Obama, he gave Erdogan $600 million to give it to ISIS. And Erdogan was hoping that after they take all this land around, he will be the caliphate of the new Islamic State. And this was the plan of the CIA to control Syria, Jordan, Egypt, Libya, all of it under the, Islam, the Muslim Brotherhood Party, and the Caliphate will be Erdogan. The dream of the Caliphate Erdogan collapsed by Putin. When Putin involved in the war in Syria, all the Caliphate state collapsed. You see Trump, he keeps saying, we destroy ISIS, we destroy ISIS. The fact, it is Russian who destroy ISIS. Go search right now at Russian attack in Syria, and you will see what we are talking about. The real one who collapsed the dream of Erdogan and the Islamic State, it was Putin. Otherwise, almost, they took all of Syria. Actually, ISIS became bigger, bigger than California, bigger than Greece, bigger, almost the size of Turkey. Almost, they took all of Iraq, all of Syria. If I show you now the map of ISIS, Let us see. Before the before the Russian they start their attack on ISIS. Let us see. <clears throat> I'm just trying to find a map. Because they have many maps, you know, we want the one which is present what they occupy. Okay, we found one. Look at this. This is the map of ISIS. There's deep chocolate color and the other one in the side of Syria. This is ISIS. Do you see how big it is? Almost their borders all the way to Persia, to Turkey, to Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Kuwait. The yellow one is where the Kurdish occupy countries 
but even the Kurdish almost have been slaughtered. And then Putin come and he did his job. And then all this area, which is, as you see, with those colors, are gone. And Trump, he keeps saying, you know, uh, we defeated ISIS. You did not. And by the way, ISIS still exists. Here, the green area, it is highlighted. This is an area under the control of the filthy Erdogan until now. And this area have nothing but Al-Qaeda terrorist. And you will notice that you are saying the West, France, all of them, they are forgetting about Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda is, is not a threat no more. This area is nothing but Al-Qaeda. Hundreds of thousands of fighters. Trump, he keeps saying, we defeated ISIS, we defeated ISIS. What happened to Al-Qaeda? Al-Qaeda who did 9-11, why you are ignoring it? Because of Turkey. He is not ready to go over Turkey. Because attacking Al-Qaeda is attacking Turkey now. Turkey is Al-Qaeda. The only one who is attacking Al-Qaeda now is Putin. Not USA. USA forgot about them. They attacked them only in Somalia, but not in Syria. They might shoot a guy here and there, but they don't and they will not even allow the Russian to do an attack. This is all is dirty politics. It is dirty politics. They don't want to go aggressive against Turkey for a reason. The American, they have American base and they have hundreds of soldiers in them and Erdogan can take them hostages the same as happened in Iran. But count my words, in the coming four years, if Trump he won the election, Trump he will take all the American soldiers from Turkey and Turkey will collapse. Actually, Turkey, I believe, is collapsing already. The Turkish lira is dead. The bank, the federal bank, is dead, is almost empty. The only support they have as money, it was Qatar. And Qatar, too, now, cannot support a country of 100 million citizens. That's a lot of money, no matter how rich you are. So, I believe strongly, strongly that Turkey is collapsing. If you don't believe me, search the news right now. Go check Turkey economy. Just go right now. Go, 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 and see what we are talking about. There is cities in Turkey are empty. Cities. There's a there's a town in Turkey. It's called, I think, Ghost Town. Let me check. They told people to come and invest money in Turkey. And then many stupid people, they invested money in Turkey, but nobody come by them. Look, those are cities built in Turkey. Nice villas, nice houses, but nobody buy them. Nobody buy them and nobody will buy them. No money. And this is why Erdogan actually is going so aggressive because he is desperate. It's like somebody is hungry and he don't want to eat and he does no food. So he go to the neighbor refrigerator. There's no money. And war can be a source of money because they are making weapon, which is not like, I mean, too much, uh, uh, let us say advanced, but it's a weapon, and they can say it. And nobody, uh, uh, a Turkish weapon have a very bad reputation. You buy a gun, it can explode in your face. This is why nobody buy their weapon. So war for Turkey is a solution. Solution to sell, solution to take over resource of Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan have a lot of resource. You can go right now and search what Azerbaijan have. 
and you will notice why are the guys interested in their he don't really care to support the Azerbaijani because they are Turkish originally he cared to suck their blood nothing for free and this is why there's a huge difference between somebody is coming to suck the blood and somebody defending his country so the Armenians are going to win no matter what for those people are willing to die for the sake of their land the others are just doing business when you bring 4,000 Syrian fighters from Al-Qaeda in Syria and from the, uh, uh, the Ottoman Brigade, which are Syrian, originally they are Turkish, to fight in Azerbaijan and you pay them $2,000 each. How you can win a war with such a people who they are you know, fighting for money? There is a, someone, he is fighting to save his country. And someone is fighting for $2,000. Which one he will win? Which one is going to be a real soldier? The one who is going to die to defend his farm, his land? Or the one who is fighting for $2,000 a month? As we see here in the picture, grandfather and son and a grandson in their village, they are carrying their arms to defend their land. Which one of them he will be a coward? The one who is fighting for $2,000 or the one who is fighting for his family, his life. So we knew they cannot win this war. Because the coward Erdogan, he don't even dare to say, I'm going to involve in it. He is using the Syrian fighters because he don't dare to send them the Turkish army. I mean, do you see how coward he is? He don't dare to say, this is Turkish war. So what we do? We send we send people who they are higher as a criminals from Al Qaeda to fight in Armenia. Because he don't dare. Somebody is saying war is expensive, and this is why I'm saying Turkish will collapse, my friend. Yes, war is expensive for sure. You know, I go to shooting for a training. If I if I shoot for 15 minutes, I spend 40 dollars. Imagine, uh, not even 15 minutes. Bullets are not cheap. This is bullet. So what about missiles? So for sure, war is expensive. This is why I'm saying that Erdogan is trying to fight his fight using your money. He's using the money of Azerbaijan. He don't want to use his money. In the same time, that will make them buy more weapons, especially soon as they find out that they are losing. Like when we see that the the uh, uh, the Armenian they knocked down already a bunch of helicopters. Let us go back and see how many. Already, this is the last update. Let us see here. The Azerbaijani they are going to buy a new weapon because they have to replace it. They will buy it from who? from Turkey I'm just trying to find the report here we go this is report actually 24 hours ago uh, 20, 21 hours ago the lose of Azerbaijan 33 tanks 4 helicopter 27 drones bought from 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 Turkey and 4 tanks or 4, or four uh, uh, like uh, armor this is money a lot of money and now Azerbaijan have to buy what they lost from who? From Turkey or from Israel, right? And this is why I hope that this Netanyahu is going to be burned in hell for the crime he is doing against Armenia and the people of Armenia. This filthy Netanyahu, he never stopped filthy. He's a greedy, all what he cares is a business making money. He have no dignity, he have no value, he have no respect, and he is not a Jew. He is not a Jew. He's a scumbag. Anyway, I just wanted to share my opinion about what's happening and for sure it's up to you to, to believe as you wish. Uh, but I am sure that the, the Armenian 
they are not the one to intimidate and not the one to play with. In the same time, I pray that many people, they are going to be, uh, you know, supporting Armenia. It is illegal to intentionally make yourself ineligible for construction here in Turkey. I don't know about what I you know. What I know in Turkey, they cannot even say anything. I mean, in Turkey, you say anything, you end in jail. And this is why I'm saying Turkey is collapsing. You see, one of the weakness, the sign of weakness of a country, that you are afraid of somebody saying something. That is a weakness. That is not strength. This Erdogan is so weak to the point, he cannot take it that somebody is going to say something against him. Why? Because he knew that he is the same. Like in the Middle East, we have uh, the hare who broke the camel back. The camel, he can carry a lot of stuff. And then there's a little hair, you put it in his back, and then he collapse. And the hair is coming. This is why this Erdogan, he has thousands of soldiers are in jail already. Post office, first people in jail. Teachers, journalists, lawyers, judges, you name it. This is sooner or later is going to explode in him. Those are people, they have families. You jail one of them, what about the rest of the family? They are against you. So sooner or later, this man is going to collapse. The economy is going bad. Things is going wrong. This is why he's going crazy. He want to go against uh, Greece. He is just desperate for money. Trying to find oil anywhere because we are dying. We need oil. Like, come on. And then he lied to the, uh, the Turkish people. He told them, we find a field of gas. Of, of, you know, soon you will be rich. There's nothing. Count my words. This is why he said, we cannot use it until years from now. Why you cannot use it? Just, just do it now. It's not do much deep. Why is it going to take you years to get this gas? Uh, so until we pass the election and you elect me again, and then I will say to you, hello, it was a mistake. It's too much expensive to take it out. <laughs> There's no gas. This is why he is so going so crazy. And did you ask yourself why he's sending his ships all over the Mediterranean? Did, what happened, man? I mean, what happened? Why Turkey need to find gas or oil overnight? What happened? All those years were okay for them without gas. Now, why? Because they are bankrupt. We cannot go back home empty. There is no food in the refrigerator. You know what I'm saying? He is going crazy for he is collapsing, not because he's strong. Nobody buying their weapon. The Congress, they put secretly a ban in the Turkish weapon, buying and selling. And actually, I want to say something to you too. Maybe you cannot do something, but you can stop buying Turkish goods. Can we? What do you think? Can we stop buying anything made in Turkey to support Armenia? I will never buy anything from any country who kill people for saying their mind, like Iran, Turkey, Pakistan, you name it. I mean, the list is long. By buying anything from those countries, you are supporting them. Like I have a friend bought me tea, it's called Persian tea. I said, first of all, in, in Iran, there is no tea. Since when the Iranian, they have tea. I mean, that's, that's funny. So what Persian tea? And why we buy Persian tea? Or Turkish coffee? There's nothing called Turkish. It's just Tur Turkey is the last country can make coffee. They buy it from Brazil. How you buy Turkish coffee? <laughs> There's nothing it's called Turkish coffee. <laughs> coffee cannot grow even in Turkey. So don't buy product made by the one who want to destroy you. Because by doing that, you are a fool. You are literally a fool. Like the Greek people, just a few weeks ago, we heard that the government of Greece was going to buy weapons from Turkey. Imagine how stupid is that? I mean, there's hundreds of countries make weapons around the world, but they want to buy from their enemy weapons so they can. The enemy can spy at you using their, your camera they made for you to spy on you. Same time, you give them money.
Yeah, in those countries, everybody can be killed. Like, imagine if I am now opening my computer saying what I'm saying in Turkey or in Iran. I will be dead in two minutes. There's people, they die, they've been executed for less, way less from what I'm saying now. You see, people, they might say whatever they want about America, but this country is very beautiful. I can say anything about Trump as I wish. I can say anything about Obama as I wish. Nobody can arrest you for saying a statement against anyone. This is why I love this country. This is why I live here. The most priceless thing in life is freedom. The second you lose your freedom, you lost your life. You are not alive anymore. You are just a creature who eat and do poo poo. That's it. And this is why we say that Armenian people, they are willing to lose their life but not to lose their freedom. Because you lose your freedom, you became a slave of the old man again. What life for? What a life of a man, he is not free. What kind of a man he is? Freedom, my friend, is a priceless. Freedom to believe in God or not to believe in God. Freedom to say your mind. Freedom to say, I, be I believe, I refuse. I, I, I don't like you. Freedom to say you are stupid. Freedom to say you are smart. Freedom. And those countries are trying to subdue you. All of them, you notice all of those countries, all those regimes, they share one thing. They are dictators. They like to take your freedom away. The second America lose the freedom, and this is why we are fighting against liberals, because liberals, some of them, they are naive. They don't know what they are doing. But some of them, they are being, you know, very evil. They're trying to tell us, oh, you cannot have a Bible. You cannot have a cross. Oh, the cross is offending us. Imagine the cross. The cross is offending them, but the, the most teaching that killed the Jews, killed the Christians is not offending them. Kill the atheist. That is not offending the liberals. So our war is big, my friend. War has many fields. There's war of ideas, there is war of ideology, there is war of belief, there is war of weapon. We are in war. They try to steal your children from you by making them brainwash. Who speak about Islam, they are Islamophobe. Why we are Islamophobe? It's them who are Islamophobe. The, the Muslim, they have a phobia from pork, music, short skirt, bikini, cross, churches, Bible, cheese, Food, drink, Pepsi Cola. I mean, name one thing for me is not offending the Muslim. They are the one who have a phobia. And when we speak against their phobia, says, "Oh, you know what? We are a Christian. We have the right to live." Oh, you are Islamophobe. But their book saying, "Kill him, kill him, whatever you find." Oh, they are Islamophobe. This is the truth. You will see a Muslim coming as a refugee to Sweden, and then he say, oh, I am offended, there's a cross in the, in the, in the, in the school. But well, this is a Christian school, why you are here? And then you will see that those naive Christians, they say, oh, we will not offend this poor Muslim. We cannot do that, we will take the cross away. What a potato. Why you are offending him? Why is not the opposite? Why is not the opposite that you are asking me to take my cross away because you are offended? This is my house. So you come to my house, you sit in my chair, and then you, talk, you ask me, I am offended. Stupidity is amazing. Isn't it? So... I'm not going to keep you longer. You notice when I speak about Islam, I will have more than a thousand here, easy. Like now we have 644. Do you know why? Because who care for Armenia, right? Let them die. I mean, we come to listen to Christian Prince because he is uh, funny and uh, he exposed the stupidity of Islam. But when you talk about politics and Armenia, who care? Let them die. Come on.
I mean, this is not not an entertaining topic. We are here to seek entertainment. Yeah, let the Armenian die. We don't care. Do we? We don't. But I do. I do for every human being in this earth. I care even for Muslims not to be killed. I care for Buddhists. I, I care for atheists. I care for every human. Because God, He created us. He gave us life. He take it. No one else has the right to take the life of a human being. And no one has the right to take the house of somebody. And nothing to be justified. The world need to stand against criminals. You see, how come they are so brave to speak about Hitler, but they are not there to speak about Erdogan? Erdogan is a Hitler. It's just another name in history, but he is Hitler. Both are fascist. Both are Nazi. Both they believe that we are different race, better race than the rest of the race. This is their belief. They think that Armenians are garbage so we can burn them. As we killed a million and a half of them. A million of the Greek. A 700,000 of the Assyrian. Hundreds of thousands of the Kurdish. All are killed. Why? Because the Ottoman, they believe that we are a better race and the rest are here to serve us as slaves. You see this Erdogan, he's a filthy liar. He claimed that he's a Muslim, right? But he is willing to kill Muslims. He non-stop keeps shooting and killing Kurdish people, but they are Muslims. He don't hesitate for a second to shoot a Kurdish woman, but they are Muslims. He is a Nazi, he's a fascist. He believes Kurdish are not worth of living. They want them to be slaves of the Ottoman forever. And the same for the Armenian, the same for the Greece. So look who are the Greece. <laughs> you know, the small country, tiny, we can kill them all. He's a fascist ISIS member founder. He is ISIS. And he used ISIS for the sake of his propaganda to take over. When ISIS is gone, he will say, oh, we are the one who demolished ISIS, you are right. All the fighters of ISIS was coming in the airport of Ankara and they are going through the borders to Syria by a trucks loaded and the gas paid by the Turkish intelligence. Actually, there's a journalist, they put him in jail for showing a video of the Turkish intelligence carrying weapon and members of ISIS through Turkey all the way to Syria. The guy is serving now 20 years in jail. Uh, army secrets. That is the truth. And the truth hurt. And this guy is coming down. Just count my words and you will see. And soon we will celebrate the coming down of Erdogan the filthy. I believe strongly that this is will happen not long from now. This filthy man is coming down like a dog. And I pray that the Turkish people will be free from the filthy man Erdogan. Because there's many good Turkish people in Turkey. They are seeking freedom. There's many good Turkish in Turkey against taking our churches. There's many Turkish in Turkey, they make fun of Islam. In case you don't believe me, you can go watch the videos. When they play, there, there was a, there was a, a, there's a protest in, the, in, in Istanbul. And then suddenly they play for them Quran. The women in the protest, they start making fun of the Quran. Those are Turkish. Those are Turkish. And then Erdogan, he made, he, he accused them that they are filthy, etc. He called them all kinds of names. Turkish making fun of the Quran. Yes, this is true. There is a huge number of population of Turkey. They hate Islam and they are against Islam. This is why Islam actually was forbidden in Turkey.
This is the truth. Islam was forbidden in Turkey by who? By the Turkish, not by me. Not long time ago, if a woman, she is wearing hijab, she cannot get a job in Turkey. By who? By the Turkish. And that will happen again. You see, Islamic uh, movement, they are like a mole, or let us say like a worm. Go inside your stomach, it's very hard to take it until you have diarrhea. And the diarrhea of Turkey is coming soon. And Erdogan is going to come from the anus of every Turkish person who don't like him, easy. The one who don't like him and the one who like him, Erdogan will come from your anus. And you will flush him with the toilet seat. He is a worm inside your stomach as an Islamist. He don't care for religion. He uses religion to conquer. Count my words and let us see. Turkey will go back and ban Islam. Turkey will go back and ban any Islamic party. Turkey is going to forbid teaching Islam in any school. And Christian Prince is saying that to you. And remember my words is going to happen again sooner or later actually those who suffer from Islamic regimes they will hate Islam more as an example Iran the second the Islamic regime of Iran collapse Iran will be anti-Islam for the coming centuries <laughs> actually if you go in Iran they, they, they made a, a, a study about how many women in Iran they like to wear hijab. 70% they said we don't. 70%. And then we are talking about 70% women. And the, uh, every woman she have a children or maybe she is single, but she have a family, right? So this is 70% of population and the, list, the 30 left, they did not dare to say their opinion. They, did, they don't like it because they are afraid they can be arrested. Which means even from the 30 left, Maybe there is more than 20 they don't want hijab. So when Islam, when, when, when the Iranian government collapsed by the help of Trump, this is the biggest accomplishment he did actually. This regime is dying in Iran. When this regime collapsed, Islam is gone in Iran. Islam is history because those, you see, Islam is an idea, it's different from Islam as a practice. Those people, they used to be free. Persian people, they used to dress as they want. They eat as they want. They are free people. And then they got the Islamic garbage. And now they have, they have police to arrest you if you wear a skirt. They have a police to arrest you if you are not covered your face or your, your, your head. They have a police to arrest you if you're making too, putting too much perfume. They have a police to arrest you if you are making a drawing. You have a list, you know, if you make a poetry. If you are singing. If you are playing guitar. They are in jail. This is what it's meant to be under Islamic regime. And there's not too much difference between, between Erdogan, by the way, and the Iranian regime. The difference is the Iranian regime is really Islamic. Erdogan is a fraud. Erdogan until now, he never closed one night club, one strategic club, one prostitution house. He never forbid alcohol. He never forbid dancing. He never forbid the music. But yet he claimed to be Islamic and he wanted to take Hagia Sophia. <laughs> And why he don't dare to do that? Because if he do that, revolution will happen. Do you understand? Erdogan, he don't dare to close the nightclubs in Turkey because he knew the day he do that, he's out. He is totally out. We have Gary Yelmez. How are you, Yelmez? Aman, Rabbi Aman. The only thing Yelmez can say to me, liar. Okay, uh, 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 Yelmez. Your Erdogan, he put thousands of journalists in jail. Is that a lie or not? Liar. Your Erdogan, he put thousands of judges in jail. Is that a lie? Liar. Army in jail. Liar. Hey, Almez, how are you? Liars. Well, I can show it to you from your Islamic newspaper. I can show it to you from Erdogan saying that. Liar. <laughs> okay, you have a diarrhea. Soon Erdogan will come from his anus. May Allah bless your anus, uh, young miss. Be careful.
because too much diarrhea might kill you. Uh, have you still not destroyed Islam? How long it, it will take you? Uh, S-A-W, in uh, fact, Islam is destroyed to the point nobody dare to call me and debate me. You see, before I used to get some Muslim dare to call me and say we want to debate you. Now nobody doing it because Islam is demolished. First of all, we are talking about Islam, my friend. Where is Islam? Where we can find Islam? Which country is practicing Islam? You see, Christianity is not a government. Christianity is faith. Islam is a government, which means if there's no government, there is no religion. Which country of yours are practicing Islam? In Saudi Arabia, Christians don't pay jizya, and women, they can drive now, and they can show their hair, and they can go to party, and they can dance what you can do about it. And they open music and theater. In Turkey, let me show you Turkey. Hold, hold on. I want to refresh your memory, my friend. Islam, huh? You have Islam still? Are you sure? I don't know. As I know, Islam is gone a long time ago. I'm teaching against Islam, yes, so nobody can be fooled by it. But Islam is gone. This is your Turkey. And I will show you an Islamic program. I'm not going to show you like a Tutti Frutti, you know, you know the Tutti Frutti program? Tutti Frutti, all right. Uh, this is an Islamic, Islamic Dawah TV station. This is what? Let me show it to you on the screen, hold. Fight Islam, I'm fight Islam. There's, no, there's nothing for Islam to fight. I'm just fighting the idea. Otherwise, Islam is demolished. Where is Islam in Morocco, Algeria, Libya, Syria, Egypt? Where? Huh? Is that the Billy Dance scene or what? I don't know. This is an Islamic TV station promoting Allah and the Quran science, brother. Hmm. Is that my TV station or this is your TV station? Huh? Brother? This is this is Islamic program talking about Allah and the Quran. Brother, I'm going to quit what I do. I want to join them. Brother, this is Islamic Dawah TV station in Turkey. If this is the Islamic Dawah TV station in Turkey, so what is the Strapteza Club is? I'm not going to fight Islam no more. I'm going to join this Islamic Dawah TV instead of sitting with those dudes. Look at this. Look at my admins and look at those. Come on. It's not even fair. My admin have mustache and beard. Look at those. Look at the admin here. Oh boy. I want to have this admin here. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Guys, this is an Islamic TV station. Live on air promoting Allah and his messenger. I'm not joking. Let me take the banner. Maybe if maybe it's better to keep the banner because you might see some panties. Okay, we better stop here because people they will forward the topic and people now now see I got seven hundred people watching now. Look in a just because we play this video, we have 700, it was 600. 100 right away, they join. Allah. Allah, Allah. I mean, do you see the pant? Do you see the conservative Islamic pant she is wearing in Islamic Dawah TV station? 
In case you did not notice, let me zoom in. This is halal. My program offend the Muslims, but this is does not. In Turkey, this guy for years, for years, he is the one, by the way, who came with Islamic science, a Quran and science. This guy. He is the one who wrote his book. If you open my book, if you read my books, you will find his name mentioned in the beginning. Harun, uh, Harun Yahya. His real name is Adnan Oktar. This is the guy who come with the propaganda that Islam, Quran have science. Look at this. Look at his eyes and look at her. Uh oh. <coughs> I better stop here. May Allah bless you, brother. So you are saying to me, why? You fight? How long is going to take to destroy Islam? Islam is gone, my friend. This is Erdogan country. So what you do with your Erdogan? Your night club, your, where is Islam? This guy, he go recite Quran for us and night clubs are open and, and alcohol is, is, is over, dancing naked in the street, in TV. And then you say to me, how long is going to take you to destroy Islam? Islam is gone. While well, fighting the ideology, so little ones will not be fooled by it. But Islam is not practiced, nobody practices Islam. All those who claim that they are Islamic, they are false. You will notice like Mimi Hijab, he don't say inshallah when he starts his program. He never said that. I said to him, why you don't say inshallah? Because he's a false Muslim. He's wearing jeans. This is haram in Islam. You cannot wear a suit. You cannot wear jeans. He wear jeans, have holes in it. Not on, like her. You see how she have hole? But her hole, her hole is bigger than the hole of Mimi Hijab, to be honest with you. I mean, it's so big. And we have to be honest, the whole of Mimi Hijab is in different location, not here. Why I'm zooming in, man? Let's change the topic. <laughs> oh boy. Your Islam is a muta. Your Islam is literally nothing but a muta. You took to, to Islam. You know what? I'm willing to go live again, and if you dare to call me, and let us see if Islam is exists still. Today, today at night, I will go live again. Who wanna join us? And let us see how many Muslims will call us. Let us see who dare to defend Islam. They don't. They knew Islam is a sheikh kebab. Yesterday we showed you a video of a Muslim sheikh teaching us that you can change the color of your wife. You can what? Change the color of the wife. Click, 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 click. She will be in the shape and the color you like. <laughs> if I show this video to anyone in the world, he will die laughing at the stupidity of Muhammad. Because all the stories are coming from Muhammad. Allah will give me women in heaven, brother. And you can change the color of the wife if by one click, brother. And the size of her breast and the size of her private part. Do you want me to play the video for you? If you don't believe me, I can play it for you. Very famous sheikh, his name is uh, uh, Mufti Monk, Monk. I mean, Mufti Monk. What kind of Mufti this Mufti is? Changing the color of my wife, brother. And he compared the heaven wife with the iPhone 7 and 6. Alhamdulillah. That the, the cord of desire of that item is just removed, so you won't desire it. Let us see. Spouse, may Allah grant us the whole. Amen. It wasn't loud enough, my brother. It wasn't loud. May Allah grant us the whole. Amen. That sounds more like it. Remember, they know sisters today. Don't... May Allah grant us the whore. Amen. That's what you see. They are horny. This is horny cult. And then he says, "Remember, there's no sister here, so we can be dirty." <laughs> Remember, they know sisters today, don't worry. <laughs> so, whilst we would like to look, for example, at her at, with a specific, for example, shape, you know, the, the words described are so, so powerful that we feel shy sometimes to say, you know, the entire... Islam is so, so, so nice to the point we feel shy to say what Islam teach. He feel what? Shy. Speaking to men. 
Those are not kids. Men speaking to men, saying sometimes we feel shy to describe what the Quran speak about what we would do, boom, boom, in heaven. Detail, because brothers might say, you know, tonight I won't sleep, brother. <laughs> He's describing it. You know, Allah says, Ruban atraban. Allah says, Kawaiba atraban. These words have deep meaning. Sometimes, if you were to read the Arabic language in depth, you would actually blush while reading the meaning. You know, subhanallah. You will blush, my friend. You will blush when you read it because it's disgusting. It's shameful. He will talk about the and, and, and the size of the breast and the look of the vagina and what is inside the vagina. You will be blushed, brother. It's amazing. It's so beautiful. It's so yummy. Describing the movement during a sexual act. Describe. Allahu Akbar. Allah describe for us what we will do in heaven when we do boom boom. How you will do the boom boom, brother? How you will? I'm not going to say more. Use your imagination. The movement. Quran. There is a word. Subhanallah. Describing the perfect shape, subhanallah. Perfect shape of your penis, a vagina, Allah, subhanallah. Imagine they, make, they put the name of their God next to a vagina. He said the perfect shape of a vagina and penis, and then he speak about subhanallah. Describing elasticity. This is something very, very deep. El uh, elasticity, very deep, absolutely very deep. I mean, you have to go there. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Allahu Akbar, you and I know that the virginity of a woman is connected to a hymen here, here, physically. Where, where, where? I'm confused, where? I mean, he had to tell us where, you know? Here, 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 here. He, where, where? Perfect shape, subhanallah. Describing elasticity. This is something very, very deep. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Allahu Akbar, you and I know that the virginity of a woman is connected to a hymen here, here, physically, so to speak. Whereas, it would be such that, Allahu Akbar, Allahu I hope Akbar. everyone here is married, ya mashayikh, <laughs> Allahu Akbar. It would be such that, every single time, a person would be in that pure act. You know, it is not an impure act as is considered here in the dunya where you need a bath thereafter. There. We have a guy, his name is Khaled Mahmoud. Khaled, listen, my friend. I, I am here uh, today, actually, I'm really busy. But I can have time for you. Do you like to call me right now? Guys, why you deleted uh, Khaled Mahmoud? I'm talking about him, he deleted his comment. Now we cannot read it. Khaled Mahmoud, if you are a man, and you are claiming I am illiterate. Just to show you, guys, don't please delete what the Muslim Don't do what the Muslim do. Because if we stop them from talking, who is going to laugh? This is what they do to us. Don't do that. He just said you are illiterate. Isn't his prophet is illiterate? Isn't his prophet illiterate? So this is stupid fool. He just said, you are illiterate. We should not listen to you. But his prophet is illiterate. And the admin, he took his comment. I did not see the rest. Thank you. I mean, at least let me read it. You are illiterate, my friend. But isn't it your prophet is illiterate, you idiot? Isn't it? I mean, I, I smash you before even you debate me. You did not even start a debate. You destroyed yourself. This is why nobody dare to call me. Because it's temperance, you are illiterate. You know nothing. The Quran says Muhammad is illiterate. The Quran and the Hadith says that Allah, he made a plastic surgery for Muhammad to install a dish of wisdom in his chest. I mean, your idiot Muhammad, he made a plastic surgery of Allah to fix his stupidity. And Muhammad after the surgery is more stupid than Muhammad before the surgery. How you can explain that? Huh? How you can explain that? Have you ever heard of a God? He need to make a plastic surgery for his prophet? To make him wise? And he stuff a dish of wisdom inside his chest? Huh? 
I think all of you Muslim, you need a lot of plastic surgery then. Anyway. So guys, I might go live on here again. Uh, if you'd like to download this video, download it fast, because as you know, we don't keep my videos. Uh, however, I advise you all to convert to Islam so you can get those things, which the Sheikh is saying, as you see. Subhanallah, it is described as so fulfilling. Let's stop there, inshallah. So <laughs> Let us stop there, brother. The sex with heaven will be so fulfilling. Let us stop there, brother. We can talk about it more because it's very, very, very sensible, sen sen sensitive information. Very fulfilling, very fulfilling. You might be looking at me and saying, well, why is it not fulfilling here? Subhanallah. The reality is... Uh, because your wife here, she hates you and she believes that you are just a mule. You don't love her, just you want to have sex. This is why it's not fulfilling. And because your prophet, he says to you, we have your intercourse, you have to make a prayer to Allah. Say, Allah, save us from our kids and uh, from shaitan. Because shaitan, he will wrap himself around your penis and he will be doing your wife. This is why it's not... The Muslim, they have phobia even about their penis. Shaitan, he have a conspiracy against his penis. If he don't say a prayer before he do intercourse, Shaitan will wrap himself around the penis of the Muslim and he will be doing his wife. Phobia. The Muslim have phobia even when they go to the bathroom. That Shaitan, he will play this conspiracy against their anus. If he go inside the bathroom without entering with the left foot and saying certain prayers, Shaitan, he will put a, a, a he will put himself inside the inside inside the anus. Uh, he said, you illiterate person have debate with the Dawah team. If you win, you will be the first person to accept Christianity. But brother, most disgusting person, have shame on yourself. Anyone understand what does that mean? Why you don't bring me the Dawah team? Hmm? Here we go. We have got the comment. Thank you, Richard, for posting it again. Who is stopping you from getting me the Dawah team? I open my Skype. I say, who want to call me? The Dawa team don't dare to call. So you are saying the one who called me is illiterate. Are you one of them? Where is your Dawa team? Where is your shakes? Who is holding you? Go and watch my debate with big shakes. Dr. Rohi. The Shia and Sunni. The biggest Shia Imam in USA. Hisham al Husseini. Go and see what happened. Dr. Uh, uh, Nabil uh, uh, Baikli, go and see the debate, horrible. And he brought with him Imam Malik Sar, two, one doctor and one Imam. Both of them, they made them shish kebab. Where is your, where is your Dawah team? Your Dawah team is busy collecting donation and raping women. Is that Ali Dawah with this guy from Korea in the video? The guy who raped women? Is that Ali Dawa who women accuse him to do something to her? She's a Muslim? Is that the guy who said to me, Christian Prince, you are finished? And he is from in Malaysia and lately they arrested him for child pornography? Is that the guy with his name? The guy who was posting his pictures and his private part pictures? What's his name? I forgot his name. This is your Dawah team. Golden shower, raving women. This is that what is Dawah team? What you, what, who is the Dawah team? <sighs> Dawah team. Your Dawah team is not exist. The second I go live on air, you go in the bye bye. Guys, do you remember? Yeah, this guy, Minji. Huh? Hold on, somebody sent me. Actually, I should make a video about him. This guy, they asked him, why you don't debate Christian Prince? He said, brother, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, uh, Mimi Hijab, he destroyed him. He finished him. <laughs> and the funny, Mimi Hijab, he, call, he called me. Christian predator, sexual predator, Christian sexual predator, because I was quoting his prophet saying, suck on me. I mean, I am sexual, he's saying that because I was quoting his prophet. So he said to me, did you say that to her? I said, I was quoting your faithy prophet, you faithy. And he said, hang up on him, this pastor, hang up. Coward. 
He promised the Muslim to debate me, but he ran away. I was quoting your faithy prophet. What is the Muslim to make a video about their da'wah team watching pornography? Hmm? So the one who caught Muhammad and his sister, by the way, she was saying very faithy words about Jesus. And how you defend the women like this? She was saying Jesus was doing something to his mother. Imagine they took the same video. A second before she just said that, they took it and they said, the Christian prince saying to the woman, suckle me. <laughs> I should make a special video for this guy, Minji. You know, he's big like an elephant, but obviously his brain is a brain of a kid. That's why he think he enjoy kids. Uh, where is uh, where is the email? Somebody send me email with the link. Uh, let us see. Uh, where is the email? All right. I'm just trying to find it. Anyway, it's not really important, but. Uh, this guy was arrested for child pornography. Not the one in the picture. That guy, his name is Minji. This guy will be arrested later about, about child. Just, just wait. It's just all of them, all of the, whoever follow Muhammad, he will be involved in, in, in that business. Because they believe that the children are mature, they are ready for sex. Uh, let us see. I don't know, I can't find the, the link you sent me. Anyway, it's not important. All right, guys, I think we have enough for today. Uh, about this, uh, we support Armenia, we support the Armenian and we pray for them. And if you can call, uh, uh, you know, if you, if you are connected, if you know congressmen, uh, uh, Call your church, call the patriarch, call those who claim to be leaders, tell them why, you're, why you are mute, why you are silenced, why we don't go and protest in the street, why we don't go in front of the Turkish embassy, why we don't do that, why, why even Armenians don't go and make a big protest in front of the White House, force Trump to do something, even if it's election time. Do something, my friend. Don't let the Armenian fight alone. This is not their fight only. This is our fight. All right. Uh, David Wood co-host did interview on Fifi channel. About, who is co-host? What does that mean? Co-host. Anyway, uh, I will try to go live on air again. And again, if you download this video, you can download it, but I'm not going to keep it for long. And until we see you soon again, I say may the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless Armenia. May, bl may the Lord protect the people of Armenia. And remember, Armenian people, nobody can protect you as much as yourself. Your enemy is coward. They are hiring people from different countries, paying them money to come and fight you. But you can make it and you will win, for you own the land. This is your land. This is your country. And nobody can win against someone defending his house to death. No one. They will win only if you became a coward, if you run away. And I know, and I trust the Armenian, they are not cowards. I know them very well. I met many of them. Real men, powerful, brave. They are not coward. Same time, they are very smart, super intelligent people. And that's why I trust, first the Lord, he will support them. I trust that we as a Christian, we will support them. And I trust the Armenian, they will support each other. They will not leave their country alone for those who live ar abroad. They will do everything in their hand to help the country. And I will see you maybe later tonight. May the Lord bless you. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And we expose it every day. Take care and God bless you.